This show contains movie spoilers and swearing. to another episode of Bite Size Cinema. I'm your host, RJ McCready, and for this episode, I'm going to take you back to 1988 to look at the action classic movie with uh, John McClane, and that is Die Hard. And joining me for the show today is the international man of mystery himself. (laughs) Some people say that he once owned an Olympic medal, but he ate it. So there you go. Kung Fu Dave, welcome to the show, man. Hello, RJ. Yeah, I did eat this uh, Olympic medal, and it was um, it was almost like a chocolate coin inside. It was uh, pretty cool, man. I mean, really you tasty. Know. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I think you... that's what they, uh, they they tell everyone that they're solid gold, but no, they're just all chocolate coins. Chocolate coins. So, yeah. yeah, clad in <laughs> clad in gold, silver, <laughs> foil. If anyone out there, anyone that ever gets their hands on an Olympic medal, then give it a try. <laughs> be surprised. <laughs> yeah. Don't put it in your pocket because it'll melt. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> How you doing anyway, Dave? You alright? You um, um Yeah. You was out on a Christmas do and I understand you was nursing a hangover yesterday. Oh god, yeah, it was terrible. Yeah. I mean it was a really good Christmas do. Um Yeah, we went out in, in a place called Putney in London. Yeah. Um, I mean for a Tuesday night I was um Sort of pleasantly surprised how many people there are, were out and about, but I guess it's the time of the year, isn't it? Yeah, and I guess everybody wants to get back out then, again after lockdown and everything, don't they? So, well, yeah. Um, well, God, what's happening at the moment with Boris's speech yesterday? Yes. Yeah. I know. Plan B. What's that about, eh? Yeah, I don't know. Wasn't that a wasn't that a singer back in the early two thousands? Yeah. Wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking he was going to come on and, on the podium and give us a song when he said Plan B. I was like... Was it? He, he kind of... He had a bit of a high-pitched voice, didn't he, this geezer? <laughs> yeah. He looked, he's a bit of a geezer, wasn't he? But he had this real sort of high-pitched voice. Um, he was in a film as well, wasn't he? He was in... Um, oh, they did a remake, didn't they? Oh, no, they did a film version of... It was a Ray Winston film, Police... The Sweeney. He was in the Sweeney. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He probably tried to take up acting, didn't he? Yeah, he had to go. It, it, it didn't quite work out, and it was Ray Winston. You know, oh yeah, I'm hard. You know. <laughs> <It's> all... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. But we're not talking about uh, the Sweeney today. We are talking about a police movie. So, um, should we go to the Nakatomi Plaza, Dave? Oh my god, I'd love to go there, mate. Let's yeah, do let's it. go there right now. Let's okay, go there. then, do what it. we'll do is we will play you a trade and we'll be back soon. It's Christmas Eve in LA. California. Is Dad coming home, Sue? Well, we'll see what Santa and Mommy can do, okay? A New York cop, John McLean, has come to see his wife. Instead, he's going to have to save her. Sit down. <laughs> Within this skyscraper high above the city, 12 terrorists have declared war. They're about to be taught a lesson in the real use of power. There is brilliant because I am interested in the $640 million in your vault. As they are ruthless. But I'm telling you, you're just going to have to kill me. Okay. We do it the hard way. Now, the last thing McLean wants. Think, damn it, think is to be a hero. Where's Howie? Hey, Tucker! Where? But he doesn't have a choice. What does he think he's doing? <laughs> job. They have already killed one hostage. This channel is reserved for emergency calls only. Lady, you are sound like a born of pieces! He's inside? Who is he? <laughs> Who are you then? You are most troublesome for a security guard. Sorry, wrong guess, huh? Would you like to go for double jeopardy? Do it again. 
really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy. Yippee ki mother. You just destroyed a building. And I am in charge of this situation. Well, I got some bad news for you. Come up here, that looks like you're in charge of Jack. He is alone, he is tired, and he has seen deadly squat from anybody down here. <laughs> How you feeling? The whole thing's being equal. I'd rather be in Philadelphia. I want blood. And you have it. Only John can drive somebody that crazy. <laughs> He's an easy guy to like. Come out to the coast. We'll get together. Have a few laughs. And a hard man to kill. Bruce Willis. Die Hard. Got invited to the Christmas party by mistake. Who knew? And welcome back, everybody. The synopsis of this film is a New York police officer tries to save his wife and several others taken hostage by German terrorists during a Christmas party at the Nokotomi Plaza in LA. It's uh, got 8.2 on IMBD. It's uh, just over two hours run time. It was directed by John McTierman, who did um, a couple of other movies, one being Predator before this, so he was, he was on fire during this time. And it's starring Bruce Willis, Alan Rickman, Bonnie Bedelia, and Reginald Vell Johnson. So, Dave, Die Hard. Do I yes. need to say whether you like this movie or not? <laughs> I love this movie, RJ. Mm. I love this movie. Um, yeah, I, I, was, I think it was um, when I watched it the first time. I was probably about 14, 13, maybe. Yeah. Um, and it was like the kind of introdu- introduction to um, action, crazy action films for me, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got this good, badass guy, a badass cop, like, um, you know, saving saving his, uh, well, his, his, well, his wife's, um, wife's colleagues, isn't it, in, in, in Nakatomi Tower. But, yeah, I just, when I watched it, I was like, wow, this is epic, like, fantastic action, like, one guy against all these burly yeah. old terrorists from Germany. <laughs> I know, yeah. I mean, that's for the times, you know, because it's you know German terrorists. Um, I remember playing soldiers in the garden, you know, fighting the Germans because obviously, we're in the history books, it was World War Two that I was on the back foot of in the eighties. So it was almost as if you was allowed to have German terrorists, you know. It was kind of yeah, little, yeah. It was sort yeah, of playing. Guess, yeah. in, it was sort of like playing into that field, and I think there's a few listeners that probably will under understand that. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting to hear what you said there, though, because obviously um, I'm a little bit older than you, so I'm figuring are you? that you, you know, yeah, are you? No, yeah, we've had this conversation <laughs> before. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Welcome to the Father and Son podcast. You know, <laughs> hey, our son, let me let me let me introduce you to this old action movie. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, what's interesting is I'm figuring you probably would have watched this, what, in the sort of late 90s, early 2000s, was it? Yeah, it was. I think, well, it would have been probably, probably yeah, early 2000s, I would have been sort of a teenager. So, yeah, uh, and I, I think what's interesting is that I've mentioned to you Die Hard and you've gone, yeah, that's a great movie. Yeah, yeah. And it kind of just shows the test of time for this film. Is it? Is I think it really ages well as, as a movie, even though it's brought out in the eighties. And when I put it, when you watch it, it's like whether it's just on TV. It's almost like I feel like I've watched the rest of it, even if I'm halfway through it, and it just gives me that buzz. And uh, yeah. it, it, and what we got to remember with Die Hard is I I think it was. It was a phenomenal movie which completely changed the game and mechanics of action movies. Because at the time, in 1988, you had some really good films out, you know, with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Stallone, you know, you had Cobra, you had Predator, you had Terminator. Um, 
And then you had to have this... Well, you didn't have to, but you, it was kind of... When you thought of an action movie, it was like a muscle-bound guy that was going to take on the masses, which was fine, you know, because I still love that type of movie. But then all of a sudden you had Die Hard turn up with Bruce Willis, who was a kind of unknown back then. He was known, but he wasn't like a sort of massive action movie star like Schwarzenegger or Stallone. And then he just blows it out of the water with this movie, you know? And mm, it's just, like, yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, it he is, yeah. It's, like, it just gets you, like, going, doesn't it? Like, yeah. You know, when you watch it, it gets you, like, proper, like, you think, oh, I wish I could do that, you know? Like, really wish I could get him, you know, be Bruce Willis. Yeah. It's almost like, um, I don't know, they've obviously taken bits from Bond, haven't they? Like, to some extent, because he's, I don't know, he's, the sort of story of a, a lone guy like mm. taking on these terrible people. Um, yeah, um, I think what they've but, done is, I mean, what I've always thought with Die Hard is that they've actually picked a actor that actually looks like a police officer. Yeah, so he's yeah. not. He's he's tough. He's got some sense of humour. Um, he's got you know John McClane says he's got eleven years service. So he's a quarter of the way through his, or one third of the way through his career. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot about his wit, isn't it? But then what I what I do like about the character John McClane is from the beginning when you when you're introduced to him, he is just a normal bloke as well because he's got marriage problems. Yeah. He's probably got some <laughs> money issues. Um, it's. You know, and when he goes to the Nokatomi party on the 30th floor, <laughs> he's kind of like a fish out of water, isn't he, with all this corporate bollocks? Yeah. You know, it's just like, you know, you've got these, that, oh, what's he, Ellis guy snorting a bit of 80s cocaine and being yeah, a twit. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah and all these like, posh people, like, yeah. drinking swanky drinks and... It's he's a, this like, rough and ready bloke, isn't he? Like, oh, this is not my cup of tea. Like, exactly, yeah. Okay. He's, you know, it's a Rolex, you know. Yeah. Like, oh, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> he's probably used to going down the local dive bar, isn't he, and having a couple of pints of, um, oh, exactly, you yeah. know, and a few shots of Jack Daniels, you know, at the bar. And Exactly. I, I, I think John McClane would be down, yeah, he's, he's, he's got a bit of rock music and... Yeah. He's having a few beers and he's probably getting on his harmonica and he gets on the stage, doesn't he? He's having a good laugh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it fits his fits his character profile, definitely. Take your shoes off, John. <laughs> <laughs> um But yeah, but you, I mean you wouldn't want to fuck about with him, would you? John well this is the thing, this is the thing with John McLean is that he's He's not a stereotypical type of action hero, but he holds his own, and you wouldn't want to fuck with him, and that's what these German terrorists find out, isn't it? Um, yeah. And like you say, it's the thing that's on John McClane's mind is his marriage to his wife, and he's thinking, I've fucked all this up. And then the next thing you know, um, Hans Gruber and his men turn up, who are a badass, by the way, do you know what I mean? It's just like, they are... You, yeah. Now they are your stereotypical terrorists, aren't they? In the eighties, like if you're talking about terrorists that are in RoboCop, like you know Clarence Boddicker. Mm. Um, I've always thought that um, Hans Gruber and Cl Clarence Boddicker are kind of like your fucking menacing school teachers, very educated. Yeah. But they're gonna try and kill you at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Very cleverly. Um, yeah, and they don't have any like um, they sort of make it humorous, don't they? With killing you, it's always yeah, like they're, yeah, yeah. They find it hilarious that they're killing you. Whereas, like, I mean, you, were, I, I don't, I never found when I watched it, I never found them scary. You know what I mean, I didn't, I, they didn't scare me. They sort of made me laugh, like because they were just so. Well, Hans Gruber was just so funny, wasn't he? When mm. he was like, and these one-liners that he come out with, and. Um, yeah, I mean, it's Alan Rickman all over, isn't it? Like, that's like his acting style. He's, he's brilliant. Um, yeah, and I think what you what you find is is that um, the English accent seems to come across very menacing in an American movie. 
as a I think Gary Oldman's done it, isn't he? I think he did it in the Air Force One movie where he played the terrorists. Um, uh, and they've just got, you know, like I think Hannibal Lecter as well. You know, you, you put someone with an English accent in an American movie and they're playing either like a, a bad guy, it tends to work. Um, and in this, work, it works excellent. <laughs> you know, it works pretty well. Um, but then you've got the... You've also got the game of cat and mouse now, haven't you? Um, yeah. Yeah. Who's a mouse? <laughs> and I think this is for me, when I first watched this movie, I was like right behind John McClane. I was thinking, I want him to succeed, you know, and mm. you think, how is he going to get through all this? And he doesn't even have any shoes, does he? You know, and he's running around. He's got his, <laughs> he's got his vest on, and he? Um, he's so, yeah, he's sweaty, isn't he? He's got like, bits of shit all over him like yeah he's yeah he's proper like the bottom of the barrel isn't like he's got nothing going for him and then he's got to take on all these these terrorists like yeah and then he's you know he's saying all the things that i'll probably come out and say where he's sort of going think think john think how are you going to sort this out yeah and then he comes comes up with an idea then he to use the um fire hydrant and um, all the emergency services start coming along, doesn't he? He, goes, he starts to go, yeah! He's like, yeah, come to Papa, man. That's it. <laughs> and then they turn around. He's like, no, 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 motherfuckers. No, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> and then, yeah, it was... It was... Um, the bit that made me laugh, you know, this film was like... you got that limousine driver, haven't you, in it as well? Oh, girl. Yeah, yeah. He, he was... Absolutely hilarious, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. He brings a bit of comic relief to it as well, doesn't he? At the beginning, yeah. You know, where he's talking about Bruce Willis's teddy bear, isn't he? At the back of the car, isn't it? You know. <laughs> yeah, and he's just all waiting outside, isn't he? Like as if, oh, what's going on? And then there's all this. <laughs> I mean, there's a point in the film where there's a massive explosion at the bottom, and um, he's like, "Fuck shit!" <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah. <laughs> He's well, got someone, the, someone lands on his car, is that right? No, no, that happens later on. That happens to uh, Sergeant Powell, doesn't it? Oh, oh yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sergeant Powell. Yeah, Al, Al Powell, isn't it? He, he saves... Um, there's a like, sort of thing going around that he... Al, he's, he saves, like, Christmas, doesn't he? Or he's, like, the unsung hero of um, the <laughs> Nakatomi Tower terrorist attack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a legend. He's, he's probably my favourite character. Oh, he's great! Yeah, because he is the he is like the middleman here, isn't he? Between John McClane and all the other police officers that turn up, um, and they he he starts to strike a bond, doesn't he, with John McClane? And then that's where he comes out and he says the uh, to the captain, isn't he? He goes, oh, "How do you know he's a police officer?" And he goes, "Well, he knows a phony ID." And he goes, "God's <laughs> sake, Al!" Phony ID, what the hell are you saying? You know, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and I, I like it because uh, that's kind of jumping onto another scene, isn't it? Where Bruce is, or John McCain's taking out some of the terrorists um, and he throws the body out, doesn't he? Because he's thinking, right, we're going to have to try and convince this guy that there is a terrorist attack in this yeah. building and he uses the um, chair, doesn't he? And he throws the body out the window. And I've got a little clip here, actually, where he comes out and says, Welcome to the party, pal. And i just play that right now. Welcome to the party, pal. And that's just, you know, it's just a cool scene, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? I think that gets nice. used a lot, doesn't it? In little clips for the 80s. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's banging. And th yeah, and that is the moment where, like, you sort of realise, fuck, we need to we need to get this guy some help, don't we? We need to get um, mm. John McClane a bit of uh, assistance. But and then the oh, the old FBI come along, don't they? And they just Al Powell's like thinking this FBI boss is absolutely useless, isn't he? He's never a clue what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, a Agent Johnson and Agent Johnson, no relation, <laughs> you know. So it's just yeah. like. And then Sergeant Powell talks to the police captain, doesn't he? He goes, uh, what is it? Is it Dwayne? It's Captain Dwayne, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. our power system, do you want a breath mint? <laughs> 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 oh, dear. 
But there's a few other bits that, that um, are before that, which is classic. Obviously, you've got the um, Alan Rickman's character, um, Hans, Hans Gruber. Gruber. Hans Gruber. Who can't get the codes, can he, to the vault? So he's ba they're basically, they are terrorists, but they're basically robbers, aren't they? You know, they want money, they want financial gain. Yeah. Um, and this is where I always think, well, I think we said this before, you need your you need your bad guys to act in a bad way to get behind your protagonist. And then, obviously, Hans Gruber kills the Nukatami boss, doesn't he? Yeah. And he actually does it without any sort of remorse, isn't he? Just shoots him straight through the head. I don't, mm. Right, you can't give me the codes, that's it. You're indisposable to me, and that's it. And I think from that point, for, for this movie, it's kind of like, right, even though you're very sort of well-dressed, you're very well-educated, you are happy to just kill someone, you know, fucking in cold blood, isn't it? And I think it's from that point onwards where you can say, right, now John McClane needs to try and sort this shit out, um, which I think works really well with for the film. Yeah, no, it definitely does. Yeah, uh, he's... Um... I mean, yeah, I mean, like you said, no remorse. It's like, he, he makes it kind of entertaining, isn't he? Yeah, Almost. yeah. For him and his buddy, he's like, um, and then you think, shit, this is like, shit's going to get real now because this has happened. And, and then you've got, I think you mentioned him earlier, the bloke that was sniff, sniffing the 80s coat, you know, <laughs> who um, is obviously a bit of a, a, a wet lettuce, isn't he? Mm. Um, and he's there's a point where they're like, is he sort of trying to help the terrorists, isn't he? Yeah, well, he's he's he's, he's trying to sort of bring a business approach to it, isn't it? You know, where he says, "Oh, well, you know, I I do million dollar deals each day, and I think I can do it with these guys." And he goes in, takes them upon himself, and um, he tries to strike a deal, doesn't he, with Hans Gruber by saying, "You know, I can get John McClane for you." Yeah, and he yeah, thinks that's going to tie this whole thing up. But then that's obviously where John comes out and says, he says on the radio, doesn't he? He says, "You do not know this guy. I know him." Um, Ellis, tell him you don't know me. Do you know what I mean? And I think it's really good from John McClane's point of view, where he's just trying everything he can. And that's obviously been broadcast over to the police outside, which can hear him. And then obviously uh, Hans Gruber just shoots him like he did the Nakatomi boss. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I mean, as much as this Ellis guy is a complete fucking douchebag, mm. he didn't deserve to die, obviously, but he does. So, um, but then, he's like, yeah, he's like a bit of a sort of feel a bit sorry for him in a way because he's obviously he's, he's obviously doesn't really know what he's getting himself into, is he? He's no, like, and oh. I think that's where his corporateness and. I suppose he his character is kind of like living in this cotton wool world, yeah. Where he thinks that he can he can try and do business deals, and that's how his world works, and he can sort of give all the gab. Um, but then Bruce Willis or John McClane is like, I know that the world isn't like that, mm. and you've got to fucking put your guard up with these people and they're going to fucking kill you otherwise yeah, so yeah, exactly, yeah. there was a little bit of because that's what I like about Die Hard it's kind of like it goes a little bit deep in some areas but then it kind of goes a little bit light and then obviously John McClane's got some wit and <laughs> I like the progression of his character from at the beginning he's kind of hiding isn't he and he's trying to sort of get away from the threat and still do something about it but I noticed as soon as his shirt starts getting ripped and more dirty, and he finds the cigarettes, doesn't he? He goes, oh, these are really bad for you. <laughs> yeah. And then he does the most badass thing in the world where he um, puts coal in the elevator, doesn't he? His first kill. Yeah. And then he writes, now I have a machine gun. Ho, Is that, ho, he ho. Puts yeah. him on the he puts him on the chair, doesn't he? he yeah. Yeah. And some kind of Christmas outfit on, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he puts a little Christmas hat on him. Um, you know, and then Hans Gruber just comes in and goes, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> well, that's the point, isn't it? Because there is a bit of a debate about this film oh, as God, to whether yeah. 
it is a Christmas film or not. Mm-hmm. I mean, what do you think about that? Give you a quick answer. It's a Christmas movie. There's no, there's no messing about. What, what yeah. The only thing that kind of uh, at the time this came out as a summer movie. I think. I think it came out in July, so they released it as a summer blockbuster, which worked. Um, but it's a Christmas movie. I mean, it's, it's Christmas Eve. There's a guy with a Christmas hat. There's a ho ho ho. There's a Christmas tape at the end, and even when. Bruce Willis is running around with the machine gun. I don't know if you can hear it, but you can hear some jingle bell tones just going ding, 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 ding. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, (laughs) So I think that's done on purpose just to sort of give it that sort of Christmas theme. Um, But yeah, I think um, as as John McClane progresses through this ordeal or you know adventure in a tower block he becomes a bit more sort of uh, there's a clip that i played at the beginning of the show which is where he's you know tom screever is like is this the cowboy like that and he goes <laughs> yeah. yeah that's me unless you're gonna open the fucking door for me do you know he goes do you really think you got any chance he goes hippie ka you motherfucker and, yeah, yeah that's a classic line like, hippie ka you motherfucker yeah oh, brilliant that isn't it uh, but, yeah that- but, you know, he's. But the other thing as well with this film, I find is, and this is what makes it a standout action movie for the time, is there's nothing in this film that I don't think you could do. So, everything that John McClane does is basically. Um, it, it's plausible. So, you know, with him in the elevator. So he climbs down the elevator, goes up the elevator, um, and he jumps off the top of the roof with a fire hydrant, and he puts um, C4, doesn't he, and det- detonates it down um, the bottom of the elevator. So all the action scenes in this is is plausible, which kind of makes it mm. real for me, which I think works really well for, for Die Hard. Yeah, definitely. And he, he's obviously like struggling isn't he because he's got limited ammo he's got you know he's got a bit of c4 you know he's he's working with what he's got and he does obviously in the end it turns out that he he um you know he comes off better than the rest of them yeah so. yeah but there's the, the, the thing that makes me laugh about one of the uh, the baddies is that is the guy that looks like a heavy metal singer he's got like long blonde hair isn't he <laughs> oh yeah no have yeah yeah, and he's like running around with his like two MP5. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, again. He's probably I think he's the scariest baddie in it because he just thinks, fuck, he looks like. Yeah, there's the um, there's I can't remember the actor's name now, but he was in Ghostbusters too. Oh, right, he's, okay. He's um, Vigo, Vigo, didn't he? The um, the medieval um, magician. Um, and then. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of in there that like, just come out from an AC's rock band as well, don't they? You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is his name Carl in the film? Oh, that's Carl, isn't it? Yeah, that's the guy. Um, yeah, that's him. Yeah, I, I got his name wrong. But that's he. So the first terrorist that John McClane kills in the grey tracksuit is his brother. Yeah, and so he's like, kinda, wants to seek revenge, isn't he? He's that's like, it. Well. It becomes personal. I want his blood. You know, yeah. You have to wait, <laughs> don't you? You know? Um, and then you've got the uh, computer tech geek guy, haven't you? You know, he's... yeah, yeah, he's hacking all the cameras, and he and he's like all the computer stuff. He's like controlling all the lifts and yeah. the lights. Yeah, he's yeah. There's always one, but that's a classic film. Like that. There's always a computer nerdy guy, isn't it? That does all that. And you have got these hard bastards. Yeah, and you have got the sort of manipulative leader Hans Gruber. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's it's, it's very. I want to say cliche, but like it's, there's a certain, you know, it's like the levels of bosses like in a video game, isn't there? Like yeah, we, it's kind of like, like what we said on the Crow episode, wasn't it? You know, it's yeah. like John McClane goes through different levels of bosses here, doesn't he? Um, and, you know, the main boss has usually got a little bit of an extra health bar. <laughs> um, Carl will just be the henchman. And I think that's what you were talking about, wasn't it, with with James Bond, wasn't it? Hans, yeah. Hans Gruber is the, the main you know, bad guy, Carl's like the henchman, and then there's all the other guys around it. 
Um, and then obviously you've got Bond who's trying to sort of save the world. But in this case, John McClane's trying to save everybody in the Nocatami Plaza. Um, but yeah, no, he's got some wit. Um, like I say, there's some incredible action scenes. Like I say, like, there's a bit where he puts the, the special forces turn up, don't they? Oh yeah, yeah, all the SWAT team don't they, down the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> and the tech geek goes, the police have themselves an RV. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, John McClane's yeah. telling me, he says, no, don't do it, Al. Get him to pull back. I know these guys. I know what they're doing. Don't don't yeah. get him to come in, isn't it? You know. Um, and then John has enough, doesn't he? Because the RV gets destroyed by some um, rocket launchers. Oh yeah, God, yeah. yeah. They probably go to town on the police, don't they? It's like, yeah. Are they just? Yeah, God. It's, I think yeah, because they don't listen to John McClane, do they? It's like, well, they just do what do what they think's right, and then. John's like, no, and they're like, who the fuck's this guy in this tower that <laughs> tell us what to do? And then yeah. I think they quickly realise after that happens that, oh shit, we probably should listen to him. <laughs> yeah, that's where he gets the C4, doesn't he? And he goes, right, take this for some advice, asshole, yeah. doesn't he? And he just like goes, Toronto, asshole, like that, chucks it down and just like blows the whole fucking first floor of the building, doesn't he? <laughs> that's excellent. <laughs> and then one of the that's probably what, yeah. One of the terrorists comes out and goes, they said the artillery on us, and he goes, "No, <laughs> that's him." You know what I mean? It's that typical yeah. sort. Of... That, that's the mouse. One guy after his all. He's yeah. <laughs> and then, um, and then John McClane's on the radio, and he's to our power, and he's like, "I don't know what you're doing in there, John, but it worked." And he's like, "I think you, <laughs> I think you're taking about three. <laughs> and he says, what's it like down there? And he goes, well, it's all okay, but we're going to need a shitload of screen glass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's your favourite What's your favourite action scene in this movie, then? Like, if you had to pick one. Oh, it's... Um, there's so many. There's, there's a lot, but like... There's an awful lot of light, but I think the main one for me is the one at the end when he's got the helicopters on the roof and he's getting shot at. Because he knows that there's like a double cross, doesn't he? And the, um, Hans Gruber is basically going to put all the terrorists on the roof and detonate it, make it look like they've, um, they're all dead, basically, isn't yes. it? But then John McClane's got to jump off the rooftop, doesn't he, with a fire hydrant. Now, if you didn't think all those other action scenes were badass, you've now got this scene. Oh, never even think about going up in a tall building again. Oh, God, please don't let me die. Yeah, they're like, oh, what would you... <laughs> mental in it this is basically the pinnacle of die hard isn't it do you know what I mean it's like wrapping a fire hydrant around yourself and then jumping off the roof as soon as the roof blows it's like <laughs> holy shit in hell it probably gets your, your goosebumps going doesn't it definitely it's like this, this is the moment I think Quite. I watched this film when I was about 12 years old and I was like that is just amazing you know yeah absolutely badass um, and I think at 12 years old, all the swear words just went over my head. It wasn't about that. It was just like, I'm watching, like, the most amazing action movie. Mm. And I kept on rewinding that on the VHS tape. <laughs> 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 oh, dear. It's like... VHS oh. tape. Gosh. Yeah, yeah. This was a... <laughs> This was a VHS rental, which I wasn't supposed to watch, I guess, uh, I did. And you I think, it out, did you? I think there's a lot of people out there, I know, listening to this going, yeah, we did that as well. <laughs> you know. Was it down the local Blockbuster, eh? Uh, oh. No, this wasn't Blockbuster. I remember this was the local video store. This was a private VHS rental store that I got this from. Um, and they even gave me the um, Die Hard poster as well, which I wish I still had. Because it wow. was the original VHS poster from um, 
that shop which I've mentioned many a times smell of the smoke from the guy that was train smoking in that shop you know <laughs> 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 I, can, I can I can picture it now, RJ. I can picture oh. it. A little you in a classic. What would it have been? The eighties, early nineties. Um, so eighty eight, nine, ninety. Yeah, only nineties. I think sort of late eighties, early nineties. I could picture um, you in your in your skinny fit jeans. Oh, yeah. You know, a little bit of a mop head <laughs> going in there. Got your deep purple t-shirt on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Picking deep. up your diehard VHS and going, oh, I've got a great poster. And coming out smelling of Lambert and Butler. <laughs> well, that's right, yeah. I mean, if I could bottle that uh, smell and use it, put it in some aftershave for Christmas, do you know what I mean? <laughs> v- think you'd attract many women, would you? <laughs> VHS store from the 80s. You know? I mean, funny thing is, I can still smell it now. You know, it, it takes it takes me back to a wonderful place. You know, having a look at the horror section as well, and all those horror movies, and your imagination just flies. Yeah, I, I can't tell you how many times I've mentioned this on my show, but it's a magic, magic, magic moment. Um, but I, funny, um, on this conversation, I do remember Die Hard coming out in the cinema and seeing the trailers. Um, I suppose you weren't, old, you weren't old enough to go and watch it, were you? Oh, no, no, but when I saw the trailer and I saw the poster, I thought, this is a special movie, even mm. at my age. Um, I just thought, that, that looks amazing, because I think in the trailer you see John McClane on the, on the on the elevator and, you know, running around with a machine gun. I thought, oh, man, this looks amazing. Yeah. Because on the, um, on the poster... You notice you only get like a half cut of Bruce Willis's face. Yeah. And they did that on purpose because they, because Bruce Willis wasn't like an A-list actor then. Right. And okay. As a sort of commercial um, marketing thing, they just thought we'd just give him a half cut, um, just to make him blend in. That's interesting, yeah. isn't it? Because you think, I mean, yeah, he's like, well, he obviously becomes big after this film, but like, yeah. Slice him in half just to because he's not a big, big, big actor yet. So it's yeah, interesting. but even though they've done that, I still think that poster looks cool with just a half cut of uh, Bruce Willis's face next to Nakatomi Plaza with the explosion at the top. I just think that's an awesome looking poster. Yeah, um, you do, yeah. But um, yeah, Bruce Willis. A little bit of um, trivia on that. I mean, he got he still got paid five million dollars, which was an awful lot of money for, Blimey, a yeah. for an actor back then. Um, and then, of course, after this film, he, I I noticed that Bruce Willis was basically John McClane and all the other movies that he did. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean, it's just like... <laughs> he's got a certain acting style, hasn't he? I mean, I think it's like some actors can't, can't um, change, they, or they can change the way they they act to suit different characters. But it, you watch a Bruce Willis film and you know it's him, don't you? It's like yeah. You, I, you I just mean, hear his voice. You, you don't really have to watch the screen. You could watch the wall, and a, a Bruce Willis film will come on. And you think, okay, I know it's Bruce Willis in that film. I don't know. I probably know what film it is, like just because the way it is. But yeah, I mean, I'm, that's not a negative thing. I don't think. I think that that's that's quite a good thing because that's his persona, isn't it? And that's that's probably what's made him who he is today. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And why? At the same time, I you know, even though I've said that, I, I still. I still buy into that. So when you when I watch Armageddon, which we re, we've reviewed, yeah, Harry Palmer is John McClane, you know, yeah, as, a, as an oil rigger. Um, and then I was watching uh, Pulp Fiction the other day, where he plays Butch the boxer. Oh yeah. <laughs> and when he's in the back of the cab, and he's like, uh, the the woman's saying, "Oh, you're the boxer. You're you know, the man's dead. And do you want to tell me about it?" And he goes. If you give me a cigarette, I'll tell you about it. Like that, do you know what I mean? He's like, oh my god, he's just gone into John McClane, mate. Do you know what I mean? It's... And he gets a cigarette, and he and he's and he's just like, yes. <laughs> well, I'll give you a quick answer. I didn't feel bad about it at all. <laughs> it's all yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, the John it's McClane just, one saying. It. It's the one line, isn't it? It's yeah. the one line. And then, I mean, saying that, um, Six Sense. He was in the Six Sense, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, maybe up. that is the only film I probably can think of where he sort of deviates slightly from, 
you know, his persona, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I think that's a good show. kind of carry guy and he's like, you know, that little boy is seeing dead people and he's like, he's a therapist, isn't he, in that film? Yeah. Oh, that, that's a fantastic film as well. Um, have you covered that on this podcast? No, no, not yet. No, no, no. Maybe we should do that one, actually. A bit of M. Night Shyamalan. Um, but no, I think you're right. I think um, that's a good shout, actually, because there's no point during that movie where he's really like the Bruce Willis. Um, uh, John Mc- doesn't bring John McClane into that, does he? No. Because he's a very sort of... Um, almost like a little bit shy and intimidating, isn't he? Uh, or... Uh, He's just a different character to what he has played before, and I think that works really well for Bruce Willis. And I do like it when you have um, someone like who's done action, and then does like horror, or then yeah. just does something completely different to what they're known for, um, which kind of works. Because um, yeah. I mean, he was in the Expendables as well, wasn't he? he was- he Isn't does, that? yeah, that's right. Yeah, he turns up. In, he, he's um, he turns up in the Expendables, doesn't he? Yeah, and what's another film? Surrogates. Have you seen that? Yes, that's, that's right. Yeah, that's the other one. Um, but I was looking at his um, IMDb profile the other day, and it was like he's doing a lot this year and next year. He's got about well, he's got about seven or eight movies in the in the pipeline, <laughs> mm. <laughs> which is a bit weird, like for an act- actor because he's. So he's like got something, something called Fortress, American Siege, Gasoline Alley, oh, a, a Day to Die, The Wrong Place, which are in post-production at the minute, Vendetta, Die, Die Like Lovers, Corrective Measures, White Elephant, Paradise City and Fortress 2. But um, yeah, it's a bit odd. Bit odd. He's, I don't know if these are all films or TV shows or games as well, but because there's a lot going on he's, for his... You know, for his age, and he's got a lot going on at the minute. But... Yeah, I think he's looking for another hit, isn't he? But he hasn't had one, has he? Um, no. I think he's sort of got into the sort of Nicolas Cage realms where he's making a lot of films, and every time, you know, if you keep, is it the, the old saying that you throw enough shit at the wall so it might stick? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just grasping at everything, isn't he? But, yeah. Um, but it's a shame I mean, at the same time because, like I say, it's, he, he has. Bruce Willis has done some fantastic movies, um, but it's just a shame that sort of later on in his life or as an actor, it's just kind of just the bars just dipped a little bit. But who knows? You know, the the film world is a funny place. It only just takes that one movie for him to just sort of elevate. It's like a roller coaster, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, but you know, for, summer of nineteen eighty eight for Bruce Willis was a good time. Um, he will. Always, I think this is probably his the role that he will be known for the most um, and quite rightly so yeah I think you're absolutely right it, it, it's sort of defining isn't it for him I guess and yeah. everyone knows Bruce Willis in Die Hard and everyone's going to watch it at Christmas time and I'll, I'll certainly be watching it again in a couple of weeks because it's the time of year yeah. Um, and yeah it's, it's Bizarre. I mean, it's something cosy about watching Die Hard at Christmas time, isn't it? Even though well, it's not a very cosy film. <laughs> I think a lot of people would agree with you. Yeah, yeah. it is. You know, it's uh, it is. You know, I think it's uh, definitely one where you need to turn off all the lights, have a couple a bit of, of mulled wine. You know, yeah. um, you got this bastard crazy bloke running around killing German terrorists on your TV yeah. at Christmas time. <laughs> Well, there's a bit that we forgot to mention where he meets Hans Gruber, doesn't he? Before the rooftop scene. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Go and, on. And, uh, you know, he's basically sort of, ah, don't kill me. And he goes, hey, 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 just calm down. He goes, you stick with me, you stay alive, you know. Uh, and then he gets his name, doesn't he? He gives him a false name. Um, then he gives him a gun. He says, you ever shot a gun? He goes, oh, I did a bit of paintball every now and again, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. He tries to shoot John McClane, doesn't he? And he goes, oh, no yeah. fucking bullets. Did that with Mr. Ducati, didn't you? That's it. <laughs> He's not, he, not pulling the wool over my eyes, are you? Yeah, <laughs> and then he comes out, and then John McClane comes out with that. That's a pretty good accent, Han. You want to go on TV with that fucking accent? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's there's a, a millions of one-liners in this film, but that is it's mental. Yeah. Yeah, and... Um, Classic scene, though. There's another scene which, you know, he's, and this is the thing, and and it is like, 
he the, the character of John McClane is like being in a building and jumping from floor to floor. So you go high, you go low, you go midway, mm. which I think is very clever. So he's got all the wit, he's got all the character, he's scared. Um, but then ultimately he's thinking about his wife as well. And there's a fantastic scene where um, Hans shoots the glass, doesn't he? And um, Bruce gets all the glass in his feet. And he has this moment with our power where he basically says, you know, look, you know, what's what's the odds on me at the moment? You know, Oh, yeah. yeah it's say. a sad bit, isn't it? And he it's basically really comes down and says, look, the captain, the captain don't like you, but we all do. And we all love you, man. He says, well, he says, I just want you to do me a favour and just tell my wife that I love her and tell her that mm. I'm sorry. And you've got, and this is really um, progressive, I think, for the 80s with action movies, is you've actually got your main character crying yeah. over his wife. And a man as well. Yeah. Is, it's um, interesting. And this is why I think Die Hard works, and this is why people love Die Hard, because I think you've got a character that you can relate to. Mm. Um, because he's got all the traits of, Let's face it, all of us, you know, everyday life, you know, we've got these issues. Mm. And uh, he's trying to save the day and do the good thing. And I think that's, that's why people fucking love this movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. I, yeah. yeah, I mean, he's just on it. He's obviously in a bit of a, at that point, he's in a bit of a dark, dark place. Yeah. He's like, yeah. fuck, he's like, look, I'm, I'm on my own. No one's helping me. Mm. Um, I've got to deal with these terrorists my wife's up there and i love her and and i might not be able to see her again and yeah. i've got kids with her and stuff like that. and it's like yeah it's like he's a, he really hits rock bottom and then it's almost like you could say like he's it's like you could metaphorize it to people anything in your own life couldn't you like you go through bad stages and then you pull yourself out of it um, yeah. but this is obviously done in a few few scenes of an action film which yeah, yeah. You, it's relatable. Um, it's getting a bit deep, isn't it, RJ? But you know. No, I think, um, and I think that's where this film's supposed to take you to that point, and that's why people will get behind. Because if you, that's why I say it's important that the bad guys are really bad, and the good guy is good. But then you find out a little bit about his backstory, and you get behind him even more. And then yeah. all of a sudden, it's back to John McClane doing his stuff again, where he's like, he's. All the time he's thinking, he's thinking, and then he goes, I've got two rounds left. And this is kind of like the end scene boss, isn't it? Where he, he mm. looks at the Christmas tape, doesn't he? And it kind of goes, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> like that, didn't he? And then he's, he's got his hands behind his back, isn't he? He's going, ah, on. Like that. And then his wife's been caught, cool, isn't it? Because obviously, oh yeah, we've got to mention that dickhead, didn't we? The uh, broadcaster, wasn't it? Eat, oh yeah. Eat it, Harvey. <laughs> 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 and there you go you got you got the sorry but i'll be a bit controversial here you got the fucking media that ruin it all for everybody isn't it? Do you know what I mean? yeah that, yeah god i mean they paint them in a great lie don't they god. well there you go you they're know. not lying are they oh, not Jay, really not sorry slightly sorry, controversial they're not with the media go. we're very sorry but we're a bit anti-media well there you go <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure there's a few dickheads like this worth. Well, no, I won't get into that, sorry. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> We're going to go off yeah, on here, RJ. Yeah, yeah, gonna... <laughs> there you go, sorry. Anyway, you got this uh, cock anyway, haven't you? Spoils it for everybody. Yeah. Um, so then that obviously puts Bruce Willis or John McClane into a situation where um, they find out that's his wife. So the bit I was just about to say where, you know, he's got his hands behind his back now, hasn't he? And he yeah. starts laughing, then he goes, <laughs> and like that, and then he fucking just draws, then he fucking shoots one of these sort of co terrorists, and then he fucking just shoots um, Huns through the stomach, I think, isn't it? And this is where he goes out through the window, and you've got the Rolex, haven't you, funny enough, which was mentioned at the beginning with Ellis. Yeah. Um, and then old Hans gets dropped to his death, didn't he? And apparently, um, the stunt coordinators, they, they had Alan Rickman hanging from a line and they didn't tell him that he was going to get dropped. Oh, really? I think it was about <laughs> five metre drop or something like that onto some cushions and they just dropped it. So his reaction is just... It's real. His reaction, yeah, which is very clever. 
That's, yeah, and that is a that is a classic scene. He's like, yeah. and he's like his hands. Yeah. I mean, he's called Hans Gruber, but his hands are like in the air, aren't they? And he's yeah. like he's falling. That's it. And then, was, was something about bad guys falling out the roof window. I think um, <laughs> same thing happens in RoboCop, doesn't it? With yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it's probably the worst death, isn't it? it? It sounds very dark, but like it's almost like a sense of accomplishment that this this person who's killed all these people and wanted to kill all, kill all these innocent people has got his comeuppance at the end of it, hasn't he? So yeah, yeah. So you can sort of justify it in a way, but for a film, obviously not in real in reality. But. Yeah, and then he's he takes the uh, jumped up Rolex watch with him as well. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for anybody that owns a Rolex. Sorry, I'm on one today. Do you know what I mean? I just, oh, I just don't like all this pomp of shite. Sorry. Nah. There you go. Sorry. I won't. A lump of, me- a lump of metal on your wrist. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on one today. Because it's Christmas, that's why. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and you know that you're not, probably not going to get a Rolex for Christmas, are you? Are you? Hey, <laughs> don't, please don't do that. Just give me, a, give me a fucking Casio, mate. I'll be happy with that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> do the same thing you know do the same thing oh dear but yeah no that's what I mean uh, John McClane saves the day gets back to his wife um, uh, Agent Johnson and Johnson get taken out don't they with the um, blast um, yep yep but and then old uh was it old uh, Dwayne, wasn't it? The old captain outside, isn't it? Oh. He's just based... I think... Um... Oh, that's right, at the end, isn't it? He um, didn't die, did he? He doesn't, no. No, no, it's not him. It's the... Um... I've forgotten his name now. The gingerhead uh, guy who does the broadcast. The bad guy from Ghostbusters 2. Oh, yeah, I know who you mean. Yeah, I do... yeah. When um, John McClane's walking out with his wife, she basically punches him in the face, doesn't she? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Well, again, that's uh, another a baddie getting his comeuppance in some respect, yeah. isn't it? So, oh, and then yeah. of course you've got the see. There's so much going on in this film. I sort of flit past it, but you get the. Um, I'm jumping back a bit here. You get the main fight scene between Carl, didn't you, and John McClane, and he's punching him, isn't he? And then he wraps a load of chains around him. Oh, and he yeah, basically gets hung yeah. by the chains, doesn't he? But yeah, I mean, there's so much going on in this film. It's yeah, difficult to, like it's just continuous action, isn't it? It's like it, just continuous shooting, fighting. The odd moment where they have a moment, um, you know, a sad, a sad scene, and then you know, it's continuous. So yeah, that but that scene with the chains. And I was talking to um, Dan, you know, Dan Bone about this with twins. We were saying about, like, chains in the 80s, you know, because there's a scene in that where the bad guy gets covered in chains mm. and then Cole gets killed by, like, chains in this. You mm. know, there's, like, little traits of the 80s where they chuck things like that in. But then, obviously, again, this is another thing where you think you've killed someone and there's probably no way that character's going to come back, but he does. Yeah. And old Cole, then he goes, like that, and then old Pal just shoots him, didn't he? You know? yeah. <laughs> and that's why he's a legend. He old is. Pal. Yeah. Sergeant yeah. Pal. What a guy, eh? Sergeant Pal's what? great. That's what I mean. It's just brilliant. Poor, but yeah. was he, I think at the beginning of the film, he was just on his like patrol, wasn't he? Buying a, was he buying donuts? Or he's buying donuts? a Twinkie, wasn't he? Was, yeah, that was it, yeah. Yeah, which kind of gets brought up again in the in the other movies, doesn't it? But, um, Poor yeah. bloke, and he's, he's been he's like on his own, on his own, he's been wrapped up in all this, yeah. <laughs> this stuff. God damn it, I need support, my car's getting turned into Swiss cheese, isn't it? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So on the whole, it is just a solid action movie, which I think just changed the dynamics of action movies from yeah. 88. Um, because you got a lot of rip-offs after this, because everybody thought, oh, you know, uh, a siege movie, so you had um, uh, under under siege with uh, Steven Seagal, which was oh yeah, rip-off. yeah. They tried to rip that off big time, didn't they? Um, for this? Van Damme had a go, didn't he? With, yeah. Uh, Sudden death, ice hockey game, you know. <laughs> uh, instead <laughs> of him, so, instead this... of him being a policeman, he's a fireman, isn't he? Off duty <laughs> fireman, you know. <laughs> 
so corny, aren't they? Van Damme oh. and Stephen Scow, just the pinnacle of corny action films. Yeah. And then you've got the uh, Gerard Butler film, and you have White House Down. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, yeah. It's always um, Angel as... It's the same thing. I think he did Angels as, fall, as Fallen. They're the same um, dynamic. Yeah, Angels as um, Fallen, isn't it? But I, I quite enjoyed that film, actually. Yeah, I've got... I've got yeah, I won't lie to you. I've, I must admit, they're, they're kind of cheesy action movies. But I think the point is, I mean, as much as these films are rip-offs, what I'd say is I still enjoy watching them. Yeah. Um, so I'm all for a siege movie where you've got one person against the masses. So I think it works. Yeah, um, it's cool, but I think it? it's the same as I'm always going to go back to Die Hard being the sort of founding movie of that. Um, same as like Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. You know, if you bring out a film that's someone trying to find some treasure, you kind of go, oh, it's like Indiana Jones. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, the classics, aren't they? Complete classics. Like yeah, you're never going to be able to. You're never going to be able to make a film like it that's as yeah. original as it. If you know what I mean. So. What do you think of the sequels to these? Do you enjoy them? Um, I don't mind the second one. Hmm. Um, I think they got a bit silly. Um, after that, but. I mean, yeah, I'd, it's I'd watch them. I mean, it's not like the Crow where the, the allegedly the the um sequels for shit but uh, they're not bad but they're okay I mean it's just because Bruce Willis is back isn't he it's like he's back in and something else is happening again and, yeah, and then so you've got the airport problem how can the um, same shit happen to the same guy twice yeah, yeah so. <laughs> exactly yeah number two um, on, yeah but I think number two was good um, mm-hmm. third one okay um, wasn't there was, a, there was a, a really recent one wasn't there was it oh my god that was shit two, was it 2.0 or something like that no no, no I, see I thought uh, number two was great. Number three, I really enjoyed. Number four, Die um, Hard Four. That was it. Yeah, num- I, I, I enjoyed number four. If I'm honest with you, because I thought it was there's some good Die Hard scenes in that, and I thought they just ramped it up a little bit. Where mm-hmm. you know what I just said, you know, in the first movie, it's kind of plausible. You know, yeah. with what he does. Um, number two, I think they just raised the bar a little bit, you know, with him having a fight on an aeroplane wing and all that, which is great. Um, number three, I think they bring it back down to like the realms of number one, uh, just where John McClane's kind of got a hangover, which is great, you know. I have got a really bad fucking headache. If you've got any <laughs> die hard with the, die hard with the vengeance. Yeah, though. and I think it's just yeah. great how he says, "Hey, dickhead, that is your name, dickhead, isn't it?" You know, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one line in the court yeah. where come back, aren't they? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, and then number four, I think it just kind of brings Bruce Willis into almost like a sort of superhero type character where he's jumping on top of a um, fighter jet. Um, but, you know, as a movie, I can't, I kind of enjoyed it because it, it was kind of like a little bit of a... Uh, knock on his character where he's not really in with all the tech stuff. No. So yeah. that, that kind of worked. But number five, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I don't. I, what the? Killed it. Killed it, didn't that they? That was terrible. Yeah, destroyed it. Um, um, but the first one, you're never going to beat it. No. It's always it's a classic, isn't it? It's always the original one. Yeah. It's got, yeah, it's got a good cracking poster, cast. Yeah. Characters, story, action. You know, it's just it's just it's a ten out of ten for me all day long. And I bet everyone that everyone that listens to this show will have, will watch it at some point this time of year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, anybody. All the film buffs out there, you're gonna be watching it, aren't you? I think Tell so. Tell me if I'm wrong on the Facebook group. <laughs> <laughs> Kung Fu Dave, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm go never ba- watching Die Out at Christmas. <laughs> go back into your corner with your fucking <laughs> Olympic medal and all your other shit. <laughs> And fuck off. (laughs) (laughs) (coughs) Sorry. (laughs) No, no, I think... um, That's the other thing. I don't really hear many people say that they don't like this, even people who aren't really fans of the action genre. No, yeah. Yeah. I'll give it, I'll give it. What would you give it out of 10, RJ? Oh, it's a 10 out of 10 for me all day long, mate. Yeah, definitely. You can't, you can't, you can't not, can you? Mm. It's definitely a 10 out of 10. Oh, dear. 10 Twinkies or whatever. (laughs) 10 Twinkies. 
10, yeah. I think every other review now is going to be out of 10 Twinkies, isn't it? Twin, Twinkies, yeah. We'll do it out of Twinkies. <laughs> if it was probably, uh, I'd probably give it a solid 8 Twinkies out of 10 Twinkies. Mm-hmm. It's definitely a 10. Well, there you go then. So, Dave, that is Die Hard. Thanks Dave? for joining <laughs> Kung Fu Dave. Woja. <laughs> Thanks for uh, joining me for this episode today. It's, no, it's been um, really fun, mate. It's been really good, really good fun. We were going to do Blade, weren't we? But we decided to change it for Christmas and talk about a Christmas movie, which is, as we mentioned earlier, is a little bit under debate amongst fans, whether it is or not. But I'm going to say it is. Same here. I yeah. think, yeah. Top film. Great show. Great company with you today. Thank you nice very much one. for having me again. No worries. <laughs> okay, everybody. Well, hope you enjoyed that show. Um, if you haven't seen Die Hard, you just happen not to have seen it, go check it out. Um, if you have seen it, go and watch it for the hundredth time, like we all have. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, just before I close the show, just a little bit of admin for Bite Size Cinema. I'm a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network, so please go and check out all the other shows on there. Um, there's some great stuff being released lately. Um, also, my other show, which is the Mystery Vault podcast. Um, you can find both shows on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, several other players. If you put in um, Bite Size Cinema into Google, it takes you to a listening platform. I've also got a Facebook page. That's where I'm most active. So if you want to contact me, that's the best place to do it. Let me know. Comment on the show. Let me know if there's something I've missed out or there's a bit of trivia I've got wrong. Or- <laughs> Anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> I am happy to be corrected. No worries. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Um, Merry Christmas, everybody. Hope you enjoy it. Um, and this will probably be the last episode until the new year. So, as always, keep it bite size, keep it safe, and I'll see you soon. Yippee A, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's Merry good... Christmas, everybody, as well. <laughs> From Kung Fu Dave, that's a pretty good fucking accent. You should be on TV with that fucking accent. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Bye bye. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Mean Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Go Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, the podcast by The Cemetery, the podcast on Haunted Hill, the Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shadecast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Witch vs. The Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.